Hey guys, how you doing? I hope that you're doing well. Welcome to another episode of Midweek. Um, as you can see, things are a little different this week. Can you believe in just one week how things have changed this much? I mean, look around me. It's already dark. I have to be in my car because I'm afraid the bears are going to get me. Um, and uh, I get the dome light that gives me like a... Uh, a nice cool side effect which adds an eerie element to the dramatic effect of the scripture we're about to read um, which it's not really scary but it still adds a cool element and so if you're with us I'm just glad that you're here um, welcome aboard and uh, these midweeks are supposed to be just an encouragement to you and I pray that they are I hope that you guys have been enjoying the content here and just a side note uh, we have opened up our small groups our Sunday schools a lot of them are opened up again and if you're interested in being a part of any of those just let us know and we can let you know if that group's meeting or not but we we almost have something for every age group now um, so if you're if you're interested in being a part of that just let us know and uh, we'll let you know if that group's meeting or not um, but nonetheless I'm gonna keep the content here uh, we're gonna keep that flowing just because I want to make sure everyone's got a little bit of something um, every week and so I hope that you guys have been enjoying these and uh, I, I appreciate you and I hope that you appreciate these. And so where we left off last week was John was executed, John the Baptist. He was executed and the disciples are over there and they're wanting to take his body to give him a proper burial. But at this time, the disciples are going ragged. They're going back and forth over the Sea of Galilee, back over here, back over there. And they just keep going from destination to destination and they are becoming quite exhausted. And so they reach Jesus, and uh, Jesus says, hey, you guys need to go find a place to rest. And just uh, go be by yourselves, and let's just go rest a little bit. And so, well, Jesus was pretty popular, right? And I don't know exactly what that popularity feels like, because uh, I've never been famous. I've never had a celebrity about myself to where I could go to any, any place around, and people are like, hey, that's Brandon. You know, it's one thing to live in our small community and people recognize you. But to be in a big area where multiple counties and multiple people are like, yeah, I know that guy. Well, Jesus has started building that popularity. And with that, his disciples as well, because they, they travel together. So people knew where Jesus was heading. And so they get there and they, they can't really rest because there's a group of 5,000 men there. And uh, not counting their families, by the way. And Jesus begins to do what Jesus does best, and that's teach them. And the disciples are hungry. They're, they're starting to feel it a little bit more. And Jesus keeps going and going and going. And finally, they ask Jesus, hey, we got to get out of here so these people can go eat. And Jesus is like, well, feed them. And so that's where the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000 takes place. You've probably heard that story. And then we move on a little bit more. And uh, Jesus does some pretty cool things. He's healing some people. And then we get to the heart of where I want to go today. And that starts in chapter 7. Right, And it says, now, when the Pharisees gathered to him, uh, they were together in Jerusalem. And what they've, what they've witnessed, the Pharisees, was that the disciples were eating with unwashed hands. Which is like, I guess, a cardinal sin if you're a Jew. Right? And so they come and they start complaining to Jesus. And, uh, and here's what they say. They say, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but they eat with defiled hands? Right? And so basically what they're saying to Jesus is, listen, we have rules and we have customs that our people must follow. And why is it that yours choose not to? Answer me that, Jesus. And Jesus says, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? As it is written, these people honor me with their lips, but in their hearts are far from me. In vain they do they worship me, teaching, uh, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And so what Jesus is saying here is, listen, this stuff that you guys have made up has nothing to do with what God has commanded his people, right? All these man-made rules, all these man-made laws that you guys have filled out and, and tried to implement amongst the people here is basically just a load of garbage, right? Nothing in the commandments, nothing in, in the Bible uh, says anything about this being a command from God, but you guys have taken this and run ragged with it and have now basically created this whole section of what people can and can't do and how they should eat. And Jesus is like, this is ludicrous. And so he starts to talk about this idea of what's defiling a person. And what, what they're saying is the fact that the disciples are eating from unclean hands, it's, it's 
basically defiling them because they're putting what's unclean inside their body, which would make their person completely unclean. And we want nothing to do with them if they are unclean people. And Jesus says, it's not what you put in your body that makes you unclean because that is just out. But it's what comes from the heart. And here's what Jesus says. He says, what, come out of, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man comes evil thoughts. Oh, I've been there. Have you? Sexual immorality? Yeah, I've struggled with that. Theft? I've, I've probably stolen something before. I mean, I can't keep a count of it all the time, but I'm sure I've been there. Have you? Uh, murder? No, I've never murdered anybody. Adultery? To this very second, I've been faithful to my wife. But wait a second. Jesus, remember Matthew? That's another gospel a few books back. Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is this huge sermon that Jesus preaches called the Sermon on the Mount. And in there, he elevates this to a different standard. And this is what men have done, right? And this is what his point is. He's saying, men, basically the Jewish leaders, you guys have created this idea of murder based on you physically killing somebody. But I tell you, all right, this is Matthew 5, but I tell you, if you're going to follow me, the standard needs to be raised a little bit. It's not if you actually kill somebody with your bare hands. It's even if you hate them enough in your heart. In my eyes, you've already killed them. You've already committed murder. Same with adultery. I've been faithful to my wife to this very, very second. But Jesus says, hey, if you're going to be a follower of me, that gets elevated to where even if you look at a woman with lust in your heart, you've already committed adultery against her. Now I'm guilty of both murder and adultery. See how Jesus takes it up there? Covetousness, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these things, Jesus says, come from within. And that's what defiles a person. And it got me thinking, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm an evil person. Because it's inside of me to where the evil is developed. But there's good news, right? There's good news here. And we're going to hop over to Romans. And... I'm going to tell you what that good news is, is Jesus basically says, Paul is talking about this idea that you and I get to share in Jesus's death, that his blood was enough for all of us. We are saved and redeemed by the blood of Christ. So all these things that have defiled us at the beginning are now made whole. We're made new. We are new people. But don't misunderstand this because people get this twisted all the time, that just because Jesus died for me is not a free pass for me to continue sinning right? We need to understand that. We think that just because God's grace is over all of this stuff, that he gives me a free pass to live in sin. And that is not the case. Friends, I call that cheap grace. That's cheap grace. That's basically defiling the blood of Jesus and what he's come to do for you and I. And you're going to basically spit in his face and say, well, I, I know that you've given grace and you've died for me. So I'm going to go ahead and keep living in my sin. Like, are you kidding me? And I know because I'm there too. This is why I speak it with such passion because it drives me nuts that I fall into this trap all the time. Right? It drives me nuts that I, I, I do this. Listen to what Paul says here in Romans 6. He says, what then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law but under grace? See, he's talking about the difference. By no means. He says, do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey? So let's break this down for a second. He says, are we to sin because we're not under the law, we're under grace? So he's saying we're not under these man-made rules, right? Because according to the law, you and I are good people, right? The law says I could get drunk anytime I want to as long as I don't drive. So according to the law, I could be a good guy even if I'm an alcoholic. I could be a good guy as long as I don't get behind the wheel, right? I could cheat on my wife and it's not illegal, right? I could go right now and go find some chick in the bar somewhere and, and commit adultery on my wife. And according to the law, I'm still a pretty good guy, right? But we don't live under the law anymore. We don't live under the governmental man-made rules of structure. We live under God's law. And what Paul is saying is that if you present yourselves as obedient, you better pick what master you're being obedient to, because you are the slave to whom you obey. And so if you're living in sin, even though Christ has died for you, guess who your master is? Sin. Guess who's got a hold on you? Sin. 
Guess who's going to keep you thinking of this negative stuff that defiles you from the inside out? Sin. And that's where you're going to stay because that's the master that you're serving. And Paul says, if you'll just let Jesus lead you, he could take away all the guilt, all the shame. And even though you may fall into your sin, he has covered you with a new mercy, with a grace that is beyond measure. And he loves you enough to pull you out of that darkness. But don't make a mistake in going back into it all the time. Don't buy into this cheap grace gospel uh, that the world is trying to tell you. Well, as long as, uh, as long as I'm not that bad, I'm still a good person. Or as long as I don't commit this sin, I'm a good person. No, Jesus says, stop worrying about that. I've covered you with my blood. We share in his death, burial, burial, and resurrection. But because of that, we have the freedom and the authority to say, I'm no longer living here. I'm setting the standard up here because that's what Jesus expects of me. Sanctification is what Jesus looks at you to be. We're down here, but Jesus is like, man, I love these guys so much, they're up here to me. So my life's journey is to figure out how I can live up to that standard. I may never get there, but that's my life's journey. Friends, I don't know where you are in your walk with Jesus. I don't know how hard it's been for you. I don't know what sins you're struggling with, but I, knew that, I do know that we're serving some masters. I don't know which one it is for you, um, but I just pray that you take this to heart, that you recognize that Christ loves you, that he died for you, that you get to share in his blood if you accept that, and that he loves you enough to pull you from that. But don't go back serving this master because you're only going to find yourself tangled up in it. And the good thing about God and, and Christ is that he loves you so much that he's willing to come down and untangle you from that mess so that you can walk with him and be obedient to him. I don't know what defiles you. I know what defiles me. And that's why I speak with such passion about the topic because it drives me nuts that I serve that master sometimes. Thank God that we have a new mercy. Thank God for his grace and his, and his love for me. And that same love is for you too. I don't know where your walk is, but friends, I just want to remind you that we're here for you. I'm here for you if you need to talk about some things, if you need to walk through some things, if you want to study the Bible with me, all these cool things. If you just need prayer, like, hey, Brandon, I'm just struggling with some things. I need prayer. Or, hey, Brandon, life is going really good. I could use some prayer. Um, whatever it is, like, I want to be that guy for you. And I know that the rest of our church is here, too, and I'm sure they're all willing to talk to you as well. But I just want to remind you that, that you were loved by the Creator. And he is crazy about you. And so I hope that you guys take that. I hope that you've been encouraged by this. I hope that your week is beyond blessed as you continue to walk forward. Um, but know um, that walking with Christ is above all else. So friends, have a great week and we'll see you next time.